How's it going, people? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's edition of The Local Room right here on Top 6 Fan TV. And we're excited about uh, the games that just went by over the weekend. Well, I'm not really excited, but the two gentlemen in the house are. Uh, great results for Chris, the Manchester United fan, and Sly uh, from Stamford Bridge. And I'm sure they're burning uh, to get right into it, which we will do right after this. Oh, he's got it! Cover still! Cover the man! And it's that one by the end. It's eight goals in his last eight Premier League starts at Emirates Stadium. Salah! Wow! What a strike by Mohamed Salah! The ball down the channel, and it's played into Fernandez in the penalty area! Oh. Here's Harry Kane. King goes for oh, What a goal from Hull. In business here, look at who scores on second debut. It's only taken 14 minutes. Brilliant, brilliant. Welcome. If you're just joining us, welcome to the locker room right here on Top Six Fan TV. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, smash that notification bell, and we will be. Uh, you know, you will be getting the notifications from all the latest action from the channel. I'd like to welcome Chris uh, to the show. First time on the show. Chris, you are welcome. You can say what's up. Hi, guys. Happy to be on the show. Can't wait to hear what we have to say today. Brilliant, brilliant. And, of course, uh, one of our resident Stamford Bridge um, uh, stewards, Sly Lalu. Welcome to the show. Great to be back, Matthew. Hope everyone's well. Brilliant, brilliant. Everyone's all right, man. Thanks. And we'll get right into it, kicking off the action from the weekend. And uh, we'll start off the game with a crunch tie, um, the crunch tie at Old Trafford, uh, where Manchester United uh, did welcome the likes of West Ham. And uh, Fergie time, stealing the show right there. 1-0 uh, to Manchester United. Marcus Rashford with his second goal in as many games uh, to, to nick it 1-0 for Manchester United. Uh, March 2, uh, the joy of the United fans. I mean, how big of a win was this, Chris? No, it was it was massive. I can't emphasize it anymore, especially because, one, foggy time. Um, two, uh, Rashford coming back. And then, three, it was the subs that actually made the difference. But mm -hmm. also, the overall performance was much, much better than we probably saw at Villa in the games before. Because people are mm -hmm. beginning to question, you know, what's happening, what's happening. So, I think the foggy time goal gave guys a feeling of, you know, we're going back to the old days where, you know, we crunch at it until we get it. But I think, uh, I still think there is some work to be done. Uh, but it was mm -hmm. good to get one of uh, David Moyes, especially the way West Ham are playing this season. Uh, they are one to watch out for to basically shut the door on them. As we did, right. uh, it was a good one. Maguire was uh, worth noting um, after a very long time. People are a bit worried about his performance uh, mm. when they saw him in the lineup, but I think he did. He did pretty well. The defense was overall well. It was overall, you know, perfect. They did well, and the clean sheet wasn't a surprise. Which, for United fans, we had given up on clean sheets. Like we knew, even when we win, it will be three one, two one, but <laughs> we'll have to concede a goal. So, getting a clean sheet. Um, Seeing the hair back at his very best, best, and yeah, but the yeah. subs coming on and making the impact. The only thing that I would add to it is I just wish Ralph would make the subs much earlier than he does. Uh, maybe that mm -hmm. would actually give us more comfortable results than we're seeing so far. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Well, that move, that win taking you up to fourth place, and uh, within two games, uh, you know, you, you have two games less played, less two games uh, played less than Chelsea. If you win those games, you get to within two points of Chelsea. Sly, how does that sound? Uh, does it look like Chelsea is going to be dragging to the top for us? Uh, uh, the games come uh, through thick and fast. Do you know what? I'm 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 not really the, the the two points is 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 not really too much of a concern for me. First and foremost, you know, um, one in a hand is worth ten in a bush. You know what I mean? And it's all about the points that you have on the table. There's no guarantee that um, United are going to win those two games. And just seeing from mm -hmm. Chris's reaction, I'm glad to see a United fan that has finally, you know, can actually appreciate that the likes of West Ham, 
is where they need to throw in that Fergie time special effect <laughs> that they used to do back in the day to beat, you know, far bigger clubs and seeing West Ham as a true, you know, contender on their levels. Because let's 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 be real, like that's where they are right now. And yeah. uh, it's a bit disappointing for them to be content. You beat West Ham one 0 at home, ninety two minutes. You know, and it's 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 well, like I said, that's kind of where they're at. But in terms of dragging us into into the race, I mean, we're in a different space. You know, the league has broken out a little bit, and yes, we right. might be bottom of that three at the top. You know, for the yeah. moment, but in terms of um, when you consider the, the 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 players that we've brought in integrating them into the team. Um, I mean, the crazy schedule that we've had, I think to date we've already played like 37 games, you know, which is crazy considering, you know, <laughs> just the Premier League alone, you're playing um, um, 38 games. And yet, you know, we're right. still involved in all competitions and all that. So the levels are already quite evident and there to be seen. Um, I don't see um, Man United running away with the top four. Um, I actually right. see that... You know, some of the other teams like Arsenal, they, they look a bit more um they look a bit more compact. They have more of an identity. They you can see what they're doing consistently. So even when it goes wrong, you know, you can perhaps maybe a few more tactics need to be introduced and so forth. But also when you consider the likes of Tottenham, if you want to talk about the game in hand conversation, they've got far yeah. more games in hand and could potentially yeah. also be a huge disruptor. Yeah. To that kind of space, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting battle. But I, I, I sincerely don't see us being dragged into that space. Okay, you're already in putting it. some distance. Yeah, there we, there we go, there we go. Uh, there's some thoughts there. Uh, Sly uh, looks like uh, you don't know what you are facing at the moment. Still delusional, but uh, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll wait. At least the Man United fans have got their their jerseys out, or should I say, their dirty laundry out. <laughs> uh, this is when after a long time, you know. Uh, yeah, my oh, brother. Right. Well done, well done, bro. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, dude, what did you use to have that jersey press? Gegen press. There's a reason why I chose this one. Hey, this is the one trophy right. that we're actually looking at this season. Uh, yeah, it's a one trophy we're definitely getting this season. Okay, you um, know what? Now, uh, now, we'll pray now, for now, you. you're, 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 now you're being delusional. Because well, you know, yeah, it, you're right. I mean, I mean, you know, for you to actually well, think, we we had faggy time against any side. The faggy time was not about which side you're playing. Faggy time, mm. was, a game can be won in the last minute. Have you seen Chelsea uh, at, in the 92nd minute? They've basically withdrawn. They've totally thrown in the towel. They've lost faith mm. in their manager, and all the players are just sabotaging the manager. But when you see the United that we saw um, play on Saturday, then you realize that we're back. Even the players' mm. belief returns. I mean, you can see them how happy they were with the win, how much they really yeah. believed in what they had just done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some truth yeah, to that. And but I think in terms of the mindset, you know, it's it's, it's completely different. You know, we 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 had right. a very soft game. The reactions of the goals, you know, the team celebrating together, you know, but that mm. was because we once again saw the culmination of Tukul and the players that he has being utilized, like he was utilizing them towards at the beginning of the season. And we right. had that blip and then now we've come it's out. It's 22 but hours. Just to speak a bit on what the, the, the little dig, dig there about Fergie time. Fergie time was always about just teams that take you to the line and you need that extra, you know, oomph to kind of get over it. And and, 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 and one, other, one other factor slide, just to add in quickly, plus yeah. Howard Webb. Carry on. Oh, yes. Oh, let's... <laughs> <laughs> the number one fan. <laughs> I had to get a police referee, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's like... But, you know, I mean, I suppose that's really just credit to West Ham. And, you know, and I think it's it's very... Um, it's one of those where, okay, of course, even Moyes himself perhaps wanted to um, to, 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 you know get a jab in there, whatever. But I think yeah. uh, more than anything, seeing West Ham taking Man United to those last minutes is more credit to them than anything in terms of what they've been able to do with um, with, with the limited squad that they have. You know what I mean? Mm. Antonio gets injured. 
what do these guys have? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They they have yeah. a very thin squad, and yet they're still a United still needed Fergie time in order to you know get a win. Which, I mean, yeah, that's, that's that's actually credit to West Ham, and uh, yeah. you know no, I think not. they still have something to throw in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, Chris, considering not. considering the run that you guys have been on, I think you've picked up some steam in uh, all honesty and uh, and, and Watch what, side. We've been we've been horrible. Guys, we've been that bad, and we Western still couldn't beat us. That's how yeah. bad they are. Yeah, like you cannot say it's credit to them. They didn't do anything. I mean, they lost the game. That was the period. I mean, last season. Last season. Do we forget that last season? Last season, I think Western was leading two 0 or something, and they lost three two. So yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Where are we giving the credit? What What have they done? What have they done? Especially taking us to the ninety second minute. Nah, come yeah, on, I mean, guys. We're better than that. The growth, you know, well, the growth. You can't deny how West Ham have grown in this season. And if you just take your yeah. United hat off for a minute and just look yeah. at them without the thoughts of Moyes in your head and so forth, these guys spent yeah. virtually <laughs> spent no money. You know what I mean? They've got a very yeah. thin squad. And they're, they're out there. You know what I mean? This this is, it's like West Ham, I would describe them in, in, in today's football, I would say like they... They play with the with, with the freedom and, and of like the Leeds and the Brentfords of this world, but they right. top that up with the Premier League experience that they've built up over these years. So they know yeah, how to yeah. shut things down. They're very adaptive yeah. to this. If you're going to play expansive towards them, they can do that. If you want to play attacking football, they can do that. If they want to park the right. bus, they can do that. They've really grown as a team, you know? No, yeah. they have. I, I must admit, they have. But for me, it's it's it's... They, they were the informed team going into this tie, right? They were the yeah. ones who were playing well. I mean, Bowen was unstoppable. Like, yeah. you couldn't imagine that actually United was going to get a result in that game. And yet we yeah. got the result. So if, if, you're, if you're talking about uh, who was more impressive, if the informed team cannot get a win, then the impressive team is the out-of-form team automatically. Yeah. It's got to be a debate. Both teams, both, both teams were out-of-form and both teams are absolutely rubbish. As we move on <laughs> to the Chelsea game, <laughs> bringing, bringing all things United to a close, we'll take the action to Stamford Bridge where Spurs visited uh, the Blues and, uh, you know, uh, Thomas Tuchel coming on top there for the third time uh, in three weeks, actually, beating yeah. Spurs, getting a bit of Antonio Conte. And we had the, you know, usual Conte moan about the golf and the quality of the teams, uh, there being a factor for the loss. Uh, but sorry, two new credible win. Goals coming courtesy of this man, Hakim Zayt. And uh, of course, uh, Mr. Thiago Silva, um, you know, uh, showing his age and experience to, uh, you know, not only get a goal, but manage to get yes. Harry King's goal chopped off. How yeah. to stop a goal. <laughs> How to stop a goal. Quite theatrical yeah. there. Uh, but credit still, I mean, goes to uh, the boys in blue. Uh, slight hard fought win. Um, how pivotal is this win for, for Chelsea in, you know, just creating a distance in the gulf between third place and the rest of the chasing pack for top four? <clears throat> I mean, uh, for me, really, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it was a hard fought win. You know, I, I, I think Tottenham from the get go, the manner in which they set up, they didn't really come there to play. They didn't want to come there and just go head on and say, "Okay, let's let's see what's up." You know, right. um, I mean, um, we've 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 Chelsea as a club. We've had history with Tottenham for years. You know, with the London derby and everything. I mean, we used to call their stadium Three Point Lane. You know, because it was just <laughs> guaranteed three points every time we went there. You know, and yeah. in recent times, as you've mentioned, you know, the the situation has been the same. You know, but. Um, I mean, coming off the back of knocking them out of the the cup and then seeing how they played against Leicester in terms of coming back late and, and winning that game and showing that fighting spirit, I was a bit mm -hmm. cautious going into this game because I think uh, over the last few games, we've really um, we've lacked a lot of confidence in terms of the overall team. There's been mm -hmm. a barrage of games being played. And I think there is still a, quite a bit of fatigue that has been carried through from last season from certain players that just haven't quite hit the peaks that they did. The likes of Mason mm -hmm. Mount, who I think is always a good reflection of the general Chelsea team and how they are when he's on form, like the whole team just kind of starts ticking. Jorginho right. also after the whole Champions League hurrah, you know, with everything. 
he 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 kind of also there's a bit of fatigue there in his play, you know, the sharpness, Kante injuries, Kovacic injuries, you know, and so we haven't really had a consistent team that's been out there. We mm. have a strength, the, the depth of squad for sure. But you know that you need to be playing with people over and over again in order to gain a bit of that understanding, which I think right. was very critical when you consider um, ZH's goal. Because mm -hmm. before we lost Rhys James, he would be there playing on ZH on the wings. And it was always classic. Mm -hmm. Rhys James would pick up the ball, carry it forward, drop it off to Rhys James, drop it off to ZH, and then he would overlap, which would then pull the defender out of position. And either ZH would... Depending on how the defender reacts, well, then he'll either swing in across or he'll lay it off to Reese James, who will be in utter number of space and be able to swing in across or a shot. And we've seen the right. amount of goals that came as a result of that. Reese gets injured. Now that kind of gets lost in the fold. But in, yesterday, in yesterday's game, you saw even Ziyech's goal, Aspilicueta doing the same thing and, and eventually yeah. getting there. So we started to tick, is my general point. It's like now we've, we've kind of calmed down where people are, we've got a bit more energy. Too many draws, of course, over the last few, yeah. few months in terms of yeah. the, the, the dip in form. But then also you have to consider the scintillating form the likes of City and, and Liverpool have been in. And going back to what I was saying earlier, the comparisons really need to be relative. You can't be comparing me with the likes of Chris and, and their West Ham. You know, <laughs> 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 the West Ham flu. <laughs> Our eyes yeah, are man. Right. I thought that was a fluke, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, but, but slight, uh, uh, on, on the squad depth, I actually, <laughs> my thoughts are that Chelsea's problem is actually squad depth. I, I, I don't see it as a team that has uh, the depth. I don't know where you're seeing the depth because if, if Kante is out, um, I'm not sure Georgina and Kovacic can hold fort like he does. Like, you don't have the player who you can bring in and hold that fort. Um, up front, I mean, they bought so many guys up front that just don't seem to click. You brought in Lukaku, then the dress, yeah. and then Chelsea doesn't do well with dressing room squabbles. Every time yeah. you have a dressing room squabble, um, there's there are two things happen. One or two things happen: either the dressing room come together against the manager, or they just mm. totally fall apart and fail to play. So True. that that's and and it's 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 we haven't pretty much, and we've probably seen it with the draws that we've been seeing or the dip in performances. Mm -hmm. So it definitely Lukaku <laughs> hasn't been there long enough, and probably yeah. because his comments were more uh, disrespectful to his teammates as well. So that's why probably yeah. we haven't seen that. But I, yeah. I, as you went into the clash, I, I saw Conte as having to settle one uh, against Abramovich, and so I thought he would really frustrate you for a draw. But I guess Tottenham is also that kind of team. It's the kind of team you just can't trust to execute on some of these things. So, I mean, just yeah. playing a simple out of form Chelsea, you should be able to do better than they did. But mm -hmm. one thing I know for sure is I never know which Chelsea I'm going to receive. Um, yeah. I never know if I'm going to receive the mean machine or I'm going to receive the dead horse. And mm -hmm. as we go into, like you said, you're in all competitions, and that's, uh, you know, credit to you guys. But with the depth of the squad that I mentioned and the fact that we just don't know what to receive, you're going to definitely have, um, and of course, the uh, dressing room squabbles, you're definitely going to have something give. Something has to give. So I don't yeah. see... Um, I see a very I mean, weak end to the of yeah. and, and, and I agree with you in terms of like, you know, most especially over the last recent games, there's really been far too many draws. There's been a lack of that kind of fight to go through to the end. And for me, what I'll put it down to, like I said earlier, is fatigue. Not so much mm -hmm. physical fatigue, but mental <laughs> fatigue in terms of what the team had done from last season coming into this season. Because remember when Tuku mm -hmm. came in half, I mean, he's just celebrating one year at the club now. When he came in after Frank was 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 fired, it was just like, yeah, because I remember it was like fourth round FA Cup. Frank left after that game. Tuchel comes in. I think he was in for like two days. The next day it was like, you know, you've got a game to play and whatever. And it was like that. And I think that's kind of what led to um what led to to the success that we received. Because it was just kind of like the pan is already hot. Just throw the chicken in there and fry it. You know what yeah. I mean? There's no time to start judging temperatures and what, just do, 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 which worked in our favor. But now mm. it's more a case of now, okay, let's properly now start adjusting to this system. So that, and when I'm talking right. about strength and squad, if you consider just looking at up front, you know, from Pulisic, Mount, um, Ziyech, uh, Havertz, Lukaku, Werner, 
those six would walk into any United team. You know? Well, you're even forgotten. You're fly. You're forgotten for me. Who I think your two biggest misses. You're you're flying wingbacks, man. Then she was with James. I mean, those guys were actually. You know what I mean? We're just now up front. Yeah. Now, when you get into the midfield section from Kovacic, Jorginho, Kante, they would walk into those United teams. You know? Proper. Absolutely not. The way in which we were playing at the beginning of the season, going back to what Matthew was saying in terms of our wingbacks providing that. Because remember, at one point, like, when 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 um our left back when Chile got injured he had already banged in five goals at that point of the right. season you know what I mean there was a clear they're joint top run. scorers actually so now those two course, mm. there was a lot of disruption so it, it, it was definitely right. there but just to go back to um the game I thought there was something quite interesting in terms of when I was listening to the post match mm. interviews from Conte it was that yeah. remember these guys came for Conte. And he even came, he had an interview and everything. Then he was like, no, I'm not coming. And he left. Right. Then they went yeah. around talking to loads of different managers. And eventually, he essentially came back, you know. And I think when he came back, they, Tottenham were more lenient towards, um, towards the demands that he was making. Because I feel right. Conte is a top-class manager. He's one of the best managers yeah. in the world. You know what I mean? And, and, mm-hmm. and he hasn't been doing it that long. So he's, he's, a, he's a potential manager that you can have at a club for maybe 10, 15 years, you know? Right. But so so he's he's looking at that kind of, I think he also wants to kind of eradicate that tag of, I go in, I'm in a club for two, three seasons, if that, and then I'm, I'm, I'm gone. He wants to kind of settle a bit and build that kind of long-lasting legacy. And, right. um, and these are the thoughts that I have from when he was at Chelsea in terms of some of the things that he would mention. But he's also very stubborn. Yeah. So he's very clear in terms of, you know what, I want world-class players. Do you know what I mean? Right. I think he's gone in there and asked for three, four world-class players. And they've said to him, all right, fine, we'll give it to you. Let's see how the season goes. We'll probably do it in January. And he's just reminding them that, hey, remember what I asked for? You get, you, you, you've yeah. seen, because he's done nine games unbeaten. Remember how Spurs yeah. were? The- oh, it's, it's yeah, with, on, with that team. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, especially with injuries. Well, uh- Run Deli Ali and things like that. Although Deli Ali is just been dropped, but yeah, so, yeah, man. So, so, so Tottenham's reaction to that, uh, you know, we're seeing from the latest news coming in is uh, they go to the WWE and brought in one Adama Traore uh, with a you know <laughs> a pint of of cooking oil, and hopefully you know he just slide <laughs> off those opposing defenders uh, and you know the days to come. You know, um, interestingly, yeah, I actually so, thought. I, I thought the obsession with Adama Traore was uh, uh, was Espirito, but it seems it's 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 the management at uh, at Tottenham, more the administration yeah. at Tottenham that's obsessed with him. So it's it's interesting. I don't see how he fits into their you know, gameplay. But... Honestly, for me, I've always said that 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 kid, and let's say a kid, by the way, because he's only twenty five. Yeah, that kid yeah. with the right manager. Yeah, yeah, could be unlocked actually. Consider for a moment what Conte did with Victor Moses at Chelsea. Right, right, right. Triori could yeah, but... easily play that wing back kind of position. You know what I mean? You oh, that's that's, that's 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 actually the position. That's the position I've I've had. Uh, slight sorry for interjecting, but that's no, that's the no, position no. I've had them mention. Um, yeah. he's going to play. So yeah, yeah looking to slot him at wing back. That's a good. That's a good one for the future. You know, but they've mm-hmm. got a lot of work to do in midfield. I don't know why they got rid of um, um Dembele. They've got a lot of work that's to do in midfield. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a they've got a lot of work to do in midfield. Will they mm. keep Harry Kane? You know? Yeah, because man. Uh, that's also another because now if, if you're looking at if you if you if you're a city, for example, um, and you're considering how many players are out of contract next season, yeah, in terms of wider European states, right through from Dembele at Barcelona. You know, Haaland is going to go into his last year so he can leave for, like, dirt cheap. Mbappe. Yeah, there. yeah. So now you're kind of like, okay, Harry Kane is there. At most, Levy will probably drop the money to maybe... 101 million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Levy's the top negotiator. He probably won't even move the price even one bit. You probably give the poor season he has had. <laughs> given the poor season he has had, like, it's... And and I think that's what actually made him um, sort of take long to start the season in terms of opening yeah. his account because he was probably yeah. regretting why 
that moved in happen, and that now all of a sudden, yeah. yeah, and now all of a sudden, even if he he tried to make it happen, probably won't happen on the same terms. It will be on much much lower terms. Uh, so, and I think it's it's a it's, mm. it's a real show of the fact that you know it's 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 not just about the physical capacity of the player, you know, most especially mm. strikers. You know, the mental state of a player is very important. The confidence right. that they have is very important. You know what I mean? Like, there's times where Harry Kane would just... He just used to turn and shoot and run yeah. away. Just like Timo Werner, man. Head, you know? <laughs> he's, he's playing a lot like Timo Werner, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't no, know what was up with that. It is what it is at the end of the day. He's had to... <laughs> Think like Harry Kane has become an Aubameyang. That's actually what has happened. He's become more of Aubameyang and less less of Cavani. So I don't know what we'll Good do about that. But... Don't 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 get me started on Arsenal, man. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but moving on to all things Liverpool, gentlemen. Let's leave the bridge and cross over uh, to another part of London. Uh, Crystal oh. Palace did welcome uh, the uh, boys from. Uh, Liverpool, the cop, uh, to Sel- Selhurst Park. And uh, they did come out winners. 3-1 goals from uh, Virgil van Dijk, um, Oxley chamberlain and Fabinho. And a consolation goal from Edouard, Orton Edouard there from uh, um, Crystal Palace, uh, sealing the result there for Liverpool. So they're looking quite sharp. Um, you know, uh, if, 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 you know, one, one game behind, uh, obviously in second place, one game behind, uh, Manchester City on 48 points, Manchester City um, on 57 points, and then, uh, yes, Liverpool on 48 points. Uh, so, it, you know, with, with um, you know, the onset of the winter break, uh, there's a short winter break coming up. Uh, you do have your next Premier League game that is going to be played, um, you know, quite a while from now. The next Premier League game is on 10th February for Liverpool, and that's at home to Leicester City. By that time, you do expect or you do have a hunch that um, the African connection, Sadio Mane and Mo Salah, will probably have returned from uh, the African Cup of Nations. That's, that's unless, you know, they're, they're, they're both in Senegal versus Egypt in the final, which, which I highly doubt. But, uh, you know, most likely they will have returned. Uh, if they're in good condition, I do see, because if you think about in the last... Uh, I mean, Man City have been utterly dominant the last four years, three, four years. But the team that has come closest to them, uh, toe-to-toe, in regards to consistency, has always been Liverpool. And uh, obviously, they're still mulling from a horrible season last time round. Uh, one of the worst defences of a title from a team, um, you know, in recent history. And, and uh, well, with the exception of Leicester City. Uh, but, you know, you, you will see that uh, there's a there's a quite a bit of confidence creeping up uh, at Anfield about uh, their chances uh, for silverware, and and of course with City slipping, um, you know, to a draw this weekend, um, and of course the impending return of the Champions League, which adds to a bit more fixture congestion, things could get quite interesting at the top two level in about a month from now. Chris, I don't know whether you see that side of things, or is it all wrapped up for City? I think it's. I mean, as as much as I had to regret it, but I think it's 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 city. City has kind of run away with it, which I don't like because, you know, Pep has that really annoying and excruciating celebrations on the touchline that really annoy me. So when I see him lose, I, it makes me a bit. It makes me a bit happy. <laughs> but anyway, but but on the Liverpool side of things, I think it was very very important and key that Klopp gets a team to perform at the stage they're performing without uh, Salah and Mane. That was yeah. uh, one that, you know, fans were watching, everyone was watching. If they hadn't performed as they have, um, it would have dented their confidence all the way into 10th of Feb. And, and we can, you know, rest assured that there is no way. Those guys are playing in Cameroon, right? That bang on at the equator. There is no way they're going to return. I mean, we saw what happened with Pate. He, he returned and thought that he could walk off the plane and onto the pitch. And <laughs> those are the results of that. So there yeah. is no way you're going to have them back um, anytime close to that match. You definitely have to give them a bit of a rest. Um, flights yeah. out of West Africa, if you may call Cameroon, West Africa, mm-hmm. not exactly the easiest. Although these these clubs have uh, private jets, but still, um, I don't think they will have them back. But the performances that we've seen, 
uh, especially you know the Crystal Palace win. I mean that that was very impressive. To be honest, what Vieira has done with that Crystal Palace side mm-hmm. has been extremely. I told I told an Arsenal fan at some point that I think Vieira is actually auditioning for the Arsenal job, and that's yeah. why the the draw the draw against Atessa really hurt him. You could see he was. I mean, as an Arsenal legend, he was he extremely it, hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> it, he actually should have won that game. So, uh, how, how, think, what how is the Arsenal about? fan base was celebrating, by the way? <laughs> guys, guys were in anguish at that equalizer. Oh, our guy, Patrick. <laughs> next time, man, next time. Exactly. Exactly, because there's, there's that sort of thing that. So, with the Crystal Palace side and what he's done with that team, and, you know, what if you looked at that team on a piece of paper, you would have thought, I think it was 7 0 last time they played Liverpool, right? So right. this was a massive improvement, and probably with a team that's a lot less than what they, you know, had against uh, against them last time around. So it, the, the, they were playing a much better side, but it's the belief. I mean, look at where their goals are coming. Van Dijk, Fabinho is scoring for fun. It's yeah. it's testament to what he's done with the team. They're not actually relying on just the front men, but the other guys are actually able to pitch in when the front men are not there, which is what most teams do lack. The teams that actually go and take the the title to the wire do lack that they only have goals chelsea at the beginning of the season when they were really firing on all cylinders if you remember were getting goals yeah. from i think i think 10 out of i think all outfield players had actually scored you're getting mm. goals from everywhere and that for me is is a city has has a characteristic sort of like that but it does fizzle out after a while uh, liverpool mm. the fact that they're getting goals from elsewhere when money and salah are not around for me is is really scary and there is there is a chance that they could make it i would love for you know it's a it's this is a very hard one for a united fan right you have city or liverpool (laughs) 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 noisy neighbors versus a perennial Uh, rival like really really, do we have to go through this again but i think i would rather it swings to city uh so that that magic number doesn't get touched at least it's zero Yeah, yeah, not even that. Just I, I want to keep the twenty unique to us. I don't want uh, you to be joint, okay. joint yeah, holders, record. joint record yeah. holders. Yeah. In the next couple of yeah, you prefer noise in the city. Uh, yeah, I, I would rather team. have that than the guys, the guys in Merseyside. Those are very irritating. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's impressive what they've done. The ability to get goals from elsewhere in the park for me is testament to how good the team is. And yeah, I hope they take it to the wire. They keep the league interesting. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Ah, your reaction to Liverpool's um, performances thus far? No, I mean, like, um, that was always the question mark, wasn't it? Um, when these guys ship off the African Cup of Nations, how are you going to perform? And I think Klopp's right. done a really good job. You know, he's bringing in the likes of Chamberlain and whatnot. And Jota has also really stepped up in terms of chipping in with the goals over the over the last few few, few games and what have you. Um, I mean, the worrying thing with Liverpool always is is the thinness of their squad. You know, cool. last season, no Van Dijk, defence crumbles. You know, Salah doesn't get injured, which is very, very strange, you know, for a right, player in right. his position and the pace that he plays, how quickly he turns. You'd expect injuries from him, but him and, and Mane, they, 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 they don't get injured and so forth. So I always feel like, they're treading a a, 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 a tightrope, you know, because when you look at the bench, there isn't really that much that you can call on or the gap between the player that's playing, say Salah and say Chamberlain, that's just, it's like world-class and, you know, just, you know, English class. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very English good. class. So um, they've done quite well in terms of that and being able to grind out wins and, and without those players. Yes, I concur with Chris with the, with the fact that these guys are not going to just show up, yeah, um, mm. in terms of Salah and money. They're not just going to step off the plane and play. They're going to need a bit of rest. And I would, you know, if, if, if it was, if I could speak to Klopp, I would definitely tell him to give them at least a week or two off when they come down. Because tournament competition is different. The intensity is different. You know, you play yeah. on a Sunday, you miss training on Monday, you're with your family on Monday, you train on Tuesday, but you're still half the day with your family in terms of that relaxation aspect of the yeah. game. You know, we talked about the mentality of players and so forth. When you're in a tournament setting, it's very intense and it's very different because that's all it is. That's all that's around you. 
You know, rarely right. do you have this kind of. <clears throat> I think those guys will kind of need that, and um, but I think really between the two of them, if you're looking at what if if should Liverpool win their game in hand, you know, um, you're looking at six points, right? So mm -hmm. April, I think, first week of April, they're going to be playing City. I think that's going to be a very critical game. Whether right. by the time that comes around, they would have, City would have grown a bit of a gap or perhaps Liverpool could have reduced, we'll wait and see. But I think... Um, there is going to be a lot of chopping and changing. I don't believe that the league is is is, is over. I think that yeah. there's still going to be some drop points, both from Liverpool and from from, from City as well. There will be some mm -hmm. drop points that are going to be um, that are going to be coming, especially when you consider Champions League comes back Champions in, League, yeah. Cup comes back in, you know, and and all of that. Then 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 it becomes a bit different when you're and if you consider. You're playing Juventus. You're playing like a top European team on a Tuesday, right. and on a Saturday right. they throw Burnley at you. <laughs> you know yeah. that's when you know <laughs> a whole day in Stoke really comes to the to the table. You know what I mean? So all of yeah. those factors. Yeah, I ask Arsenal. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liverpool midweek, Burnley at you one time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, brick wall, so I think right? It's still wide open, um, but I would still, yeah. I still feel City do have the kind of upper hand because, um, like, they're just starting to wobble a little bit. You know, the yeah. form that yeah. we were in, them beating us one nil, needing a wonder goal to beat us. You know, mm. it wasn't, a, it wasn't an outright convincing win for me personally, but of course, I'm biased in that sense. Um, mm. The draw that they picked up yeah. as well, you know. So you're starting to see that, you know, there's those are those are now when those little chinks start to yeah, kind of chinks appear. in the armor, eh? Yeah, and they start to appear, and then and 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 you know when you're getting into like the February situation, you know they've 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 got a, they've got Tottenham there, they've got Everton in between F, the Premier League games, in between Champions League games, and things like that. So I, I really right. see it going, going. It's going to be a good fight. It's unfortunate that I think it's it's too late for us. We've we've, we've let too much of a gap grow. Once you hit double yeah. digits in terms of a gap, then it becomes very very difficult because you're asking somebody to lose three games whilst you're winning three, three games. I don't see yeah. any of those two doing anytime soon. So um, yeah, man. So yeah, let's let's yeah, man. let's let's hope they actually win so that they do take it to the wire. We don't want City to run away with it again. Let's yeah. let's yeah. let's maybe have another let's make it moment, interesting. you know, or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Kind of good. Yeah, was, might just score that goal big, himself, big, man. Big up to to Vieira in terms of, I mean yeah. initially, and I'm not even just talking about fans, but even pundits, when um when he showed up as Crystal Palace manager, you know, guys are just kind of like, well, oh, what's going on? And then yeah. the first couple of games, it was kind of like, ah, is this guy really up for it? And then all yeah. of a sudden, started to see a bit of an idea. Yeah, he got it together. Yeah, he added but, some spice in there, right? You know, he's got players like Zaha and whatever, and they need that manager that just tells them, go, you know, they've got... Express that, yourself. Uh, mm. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. they've got that kid. Oh, what's his name? I forget his name. He's injured right now. Gallagher. Yeah. The Chelsea no, guy. We gave him. Oh, Eberiche Eb Eze. Yes, Eze. Like, oh, players, Eze. like yeah. Wow. That have been away for a while. You know, they imagine they come back now mid season, they've got a bit of a point to prove. You know, yeah. they, I see them doing doing doing, doing some of these. I think he's done a phenomenal job, but I don't want to judge him yeah. on this season. I'd rather judge him on next season to see to, to consider like the level of consistency in which he's, he's he brings to the table. Um I think right. Arteta, just in terms of the Arsenal conversation, has also done a, a, a very good job in terms of you know, initially, I, I, I really because what was quite interesting was when you look at the, the the signings that were made, and then there was a there was an interview by Cronkers' son, I believe it was, and he was talking about you know what this is a long term project. You know what I mean? This is right, so clearly right. the, the message I got was the, okay, the club is backing him for the long term. They don't have the money to back him for the short term because short term backing means that you know you're spending <laughs> spending, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, spend big, money. you know. We don't have the money to spend big, so the only option that we have is to say we're going to trust in your direction and we're going to give you three seasons to do something. 
which I think, right. can, can, and if you can keep this squad together, the the, the Martinelli's, the the, the Sakas, like guys are guys, guys, guys are playing. I think all that's lacking right now is just a bit of that um, that X factor and that experience. Maybe they can go in there and snatch up a few kind of. Experience. You it would have been great if you saw a player like Coutinho going to Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like players like that, that have that experience, that have that maturity, but can still okay, degree, yeah. I, I think I think they tried. He rejected them already, so Oh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. It's, yeah, it's yeah, about about the process. Price. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, who wants Coutinho when you have Granny Jacker, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean about the yeah, process. Right? The... Man, I think it's killing it. Don't get me started on Ateta. No, on the no, Astro like, piece, what I think, I think what's going to break Ateta is how he handles this Aubameyang situation. Uh, because right. if you go back to, you know, the Arsenal that took the FA Cups and so on, Aubameyang was a, a key, key person. And it shows that he's a very key person in that dressing room. I mean, even the young guys tend to, you know, uh, parade around him. And probably the only thing that's holding uh, onto the dressing room is probably Aubameyang has actually asked that, don't make this about me, you know, play for the club. But how he continues to embarrass him and make a joke out of him will determine how the dressing room actually responds to that. And that may be what breaks him. Mm. I mean, um, he's, he's losing leaders. I mean, Shaka is back and then he does what he did and, you know, he's done it again. I mean, he's fallen apart with him before in the past. So how he handles that man, man and that's what just really shows um, when the players begin to actually be bigger. Although, credit to him, he's done what, you know, much more experienced managers are not able to do to actually uh, put a player of that caliber who's probably bigger who has a bigger profile than he does and just tell him you know you're going to sit it out until you know your performance yeah. is not good enough and i'm going to go sit in your lamborghini man yeah yeah like he's been able to do that i mean that those are things you know uh, guys like I, 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 know, I think that was actually such a weak move in my view because first of all obama young's form had dropped he wasn't playing that great and then when right, you yeah. look at the actual situation yes he's breaking the club rules yes i get it he was supposed to be there on time and whatnot i remember back in the day when i was in an academy we used to have to clean players, senior players' boots. You have to clean their dressing room and stuff like that. And there were all these rules, whether you're late, you were fined, and all of these things. You had to do chores. Man, and that's all well the good. 70s yeah. were tough, that's man. The 70s were tough. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. See, Was that Nottingham <laughs> Forest, eh? Like, they were honestly just, they were, they, were, they were just airing out their dirty laundry in public, yeah? Yeah, Obama Young, yeah. that situation should have been dealt with in-house. The guy went to see his mom who was sick. He delayed to come back. And, you know, now you've taken, you've gone to this stage of saying, I'm going to remove, going publicly and say, I'm removing his armband. and All All he had to do was just drop him on yeah. the bench. His form was off anyway. Just on form yeah. alone, he could have justified not playing. Yeah. And of course, if right. he's not on the bench, then that means the armband has to go to somebody else. You could have kept mm. all of that in-house. And then this new mm -hmm. captain that you want to go with could have been playing three, four, five games. And then you come out and say, you know what? Actually, we want to hand it over to this guy. And it becomes about that. Yeah. Because trust me, yeah. right now, I mean, you know him. He's a flashy guy. He's, he's you know, like, like Matthew mentioned, gold Lamborghinis and whatnot. He's going to sit on that 350, 400K. He would just see a joke. He doesn't have any. He's the new Aussie, eh? He's the no, new Aussie no, no. at the club. <laughs> Dude, hey. making those Momo pay with draws, man. <laughs> guy has trophies. Guy has money in the bank. He still has, right. I don't know how long. He's, I think, what, he's got two he's years. 32, he's, man. He's, he's 32. He's, he's, I mean, he's enjoying the money right now. Uh, he's, got, he's got a year left after this team. A year left, yeah. right out this year. He's 32, yeah. right out. He's 33. He goes off to America. But the damage that right. would have been done to the club is that yeah. the wage bill would have been strangled as a result of it when you could have right. actually probably gotten rid of him this season if that level of animosity wasn't there to you know ship him off to i don't know barcelona or something who where aguero is yeah, yeah. So, all right you know what go off there for a little while whilst we figure things out so i think that was a bit of a a a, a weak move on arteta's side in terms of going really public with that situation because most yeah. fans actually sympathize with Aubameyang, mm -hmm. and of course the players also yeah. at the same time of his leadership right. and so also sympathize with him 
So he didn't do himself any 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 kind of justice there. But in terms of yeah, yeah just to chip in, he's doing well. Yeah, man. Uh, I think yeah, he's well. I'm 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 kind of sitting on the fence with with Mikel Arteta to be honest. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll wait. I'll, I'll I'll pass judgment at the end of the season to see where he finishes. But I mean, out of two cuts, dude, our season is done in January. Uh, we haven't won a game in in in, in January. Uh, we have we scored one goal in January. The only way out, I mean, we're letting crucial players. We, we did what had to postpone games, right? But we're letting Ensley, Maitland, Niles go to Roma without forward planning, and we have we're relying on Granite Jack, who uh, always comes out looking like he's from a Cobra Kai dojo. He's <laughs> throwing oh, flying kicks all over the place, man. If there's not a penalty he's given out, it's a red card the following game. It's a red card. He's killing us, yeah. man. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, and this one's, I mean, th that one specifically is on Ateta. I would have taken the 15 million pounds Roma had to offer last season. And, you yeah. know, instead of buying a budget player in Lokonga, would probably be good for the future. I'd have topped up yeah. with that money and brought in like a Bisuma or someone oh, like yeah. that who. You know, yeah. and in DD from Leicester City, someone yeah. you know a bit more Premier League experience, who come in and and you know you know probably a Yuri Tillman's from uh, from Leicester City as well. You know, just to sit besides uh, you know party in the midfield to give it a bit more solidity. So there's, there there are some you know despite uh, the academy players lifting the team uh, throughout the season and great performances from uh, you know the players who were brought in who you know who are very good. Uh, this it is still a massive uh, crux in 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 um in the way Arsenal is playing. I mean, win four, lose two crucial ones, draw yeah. three. You know, inconsistency is not there. It's very trying to throw. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, lack of ideas attacking wise, which which I thought I'd never say as an Arsenal fan. Um, I mean, guys were just throwing. You must have put like twenty aerial balls in there. Really I guess one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean to be honest, from the beginning of the season, um, top right. four was was never really a realistic expectation, you know. To be fair, yeah, because yeah. He, it was it was a very new club. I mean, been very new squad, young. You started the season terribly, you know. Right. <laughs> you at that point, the target was staying in the Premiership. That was their target at that point. Just stay in the Premiership. <laughs> 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 They might even be clips of it, but I'd always said, you know what? If you finish in Europa, freaking good season. And that's where you are at the moment. You know what I mean? Hey. You're there, you're six, you know, um, your 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 same points. Yeah, but as but, but but Sly, you know, in addition to that, we expected a good cup run, right? We're out yeah, of the two yeah, cups in January, right? So there's a lot of pain going on. And the only way I see out of it, you know, because you know, uh, Arteta has this uh, no no nonsense approach. I've forgotten what he calls it, but some, some uh, despotic town there. Uh, I think, you know, you'll just call that the treatment of... It's not the first time. His, his man management, I think, because he's at the same stage in his career, is, is, is quite, uh, you know, I, I think he's still lacking because you have the likes of Gwenduzi, who have also been uh, locked out in a similar way. Saliba, unclear circumstances, uh, and yet they're both shining, right, at Marseille. So, so there is an issue for me there with his man management, um, and I think we we are suffering the brunt of Ateta get learning his experience uh, or learning on the job. He might be a fabulous manager, you know, four or five years from now, but right now he's half-baked, and the only way he can get out of that approach uh Having that heavy-handedness on, on on players for disciplinary issues and probably not keeping it in, indoors like you like you mentioned um, is 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 by having the club back in. Now, if you know you have a week to go to the end of the transfer window, if for example, uh, Daily Dusan, uh, as I like to call it, comes to fruition, uh, which is you know the rumors about Daily rumors of uh, you know Dusan Vlaovic coming in from mm. Fiorentina. Uh, if that does come to fruition and, uh, you know, Dusan Vlahovic comes through the door, you get a Yuri Tillemans or even an Arthur Bello, uh, as we're rumored to, um, you know, to, to to be chasing as well. You get those two coming. Hold up. You hold up, up. You. hold yeah. up, hold up, hold up. Never yeah, rely let him finish on... His wish list. Let him finish his wish Because <laughs> 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 I, I just want to tell you, I never ever tell me stories about a player not playing the Premiership and shining out there 
walking into the premiership and being your savior. That is like a dream. No, 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 no. But but I mean, we had it with uh, Bruno Fernandez. What are you what, what what are you saying? You Manchester yeah, United. Bruno Fernandez is an exceptional player. Every Bruno yeah, Fernandez is an exception. the exception. No, 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 no. There are no exceptions to that exception. You never know. It's I mean, it's it's no, it's, 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 it's you that. And also, the anyway. new players come in, it galvanizes the entire squad. Everyone yeah. kind of feels a bit like you know what? Let's 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 get in on this. It's it, it brings nah, forward. Guys. Like, yeah, it's like nah, excites players, you know. The premiership gives the team a lift. The premiership is a beast like no mm. other. There is no player going to walk in and change your fortunes. Uh, playing in Italy, Italy at that, I mean, that's not going to happen. That's yeah, we can see that with Romelu Lukaku. To be honest, right? Yeah, you know, mm. yeah, 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 they, they win, go out there, you know, they score the goal. Yeah. Sancho at, at United, I mean, he was doing wonders and. He comes in and he just can't keep up with the pace. It's a totally different animal. So if well, it, actually at yeah. the time the time we were going for Sancho as United, I was stuck on going for Grealish because I thought he's a premiership experienced player. Uh, right. We went for Sancho, you know, and and you know Pep keeps playing Grealish in the wrong position. So it's just interesting. So I I, I would never back my season on a non premiership experienced player. Big mistake. I mean, yeah, well, just to go back I, to Arteta for a bit in terms of his his thing and and you know his kind of heavy handedness with, with 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 players and whatnot, you know, and and I think the only reason why we're kind of giving him a bit of stick for it is because he doesn't have the CV to kind of back it up in terms of <laughs> you know what you've been able to achieve, like from yeah, man. Get, but I see a lot of that in terms of how Pep manages his players. You know, when Pep yes. falls out, guys, it's just complete. So I see a lot of those similarities. And we must remember, you know, Arteta is, you know, a, a, a poster yeah. child of Pep Guardiola, you know. So it's... Right, it's, right. Same culture, yeah. Maybe like, and, and just perhaps maybe he'll get his own identity and kind of thing. But I, I, I think, like I said before, you know, in terms of um, Arsenal, I think they are where I expected them to be. Um, in in terms of from the beginning of the season, in terms of being there around the top eight, you know, and um, if they can stabilize a bit, you know, they might finish sixth or around there. But I don't see them breaking into the top four. But um, right. yeah, let's see what happens. If only Manchester United would take Eddie and Ketty out. <laughs> <laughs> if only. If only. Oh, <laughs> right, let, 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 let's move on to the final game of uh, the weekend, which was uh, obviously uh, Manchester City getting a shocker, uh, being stunned by Southampton away at uh, um, <clears throat> at Southampton's home stadium, and uh, Manchester City joined one-one uh, with the, with the citizens. Uh, Kyle Walker Peters. Former uh, Spurs player opening the account before I married Laporte, um, you know, finished off uh, a Kevin De Bruyne assist. Uh, but City unable to break down Southampton, who defended resolutely until the end. Um, and of course, a slight wobble there that we're calling from City, and uh, uh, you can see Guardiola's reaction to that. Um, we obviously discussed quite a bit of the impact it probably will have, uh, or it could have, on the end of the season. Um, but uh, you know, maybe just to wrap it up, as we are running out of time, um, uh, starting with you, Chris, a wobble, or do you see uh, City actually um, coming back to um, lay down the law for the rest of their fixtures? Because uh, looking at the next Premier League ties, uh, they do have Brentford at home. Uh, they have Norwich. Oh man, you expect like a, what seven nil in that one? And then you have sort of easy tie in the Champions League with Sporting Lisbon. So they have a favorable uh, tie in the knockout rounds uh, initially uh, before it starts to get interesting uh, towards mid, uh, mid-February mid uh, where they do welcome Tottenham Hotspurs, then they go away to Everton, and then they welcome Manchester United for the Manchester derby. Um, yeah. and, and so, yes... For now, I, I think the next uh, few games, uh, more or less what you'd call winnable games for City. So you, I, I wouldn't put it past them to, to, you know, to come back and stamp their authority again. Look, it's 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 always a shocker when City um, is not able to get the three points against pretty much any side in the Premiership, apart from United, right. of course. But 
<laughs> even when I was like, uh, as I put together my fantasy team, I I looked at that fixture and I, I thought to myself, um, City guys have to be in it. They have to be in the defense. They'll get a clean sheet. But that's what happens with City. There is there is that one result. But the only dip, the, the problem is that it's one in like ten. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, so you get like three in a season. And and, yeah. and this is the one that get it. and like you mentioned, their next fixtures you probably will expect them to overreact and overcorrect what went wrong um, against Southampton. Yeah. So I really feel for Brentford and and and, and Norwich because they're Norwich. going to be whitewashed. Uh, usually, when when Pep when Pep has a, a wobble, he like he really overreacts. I mean, he goes in full throttle to remind everyone. He just lays down the gauntlet to remind everyone who who they are. So. Um, yeah. and, and of course, if he goes ahead and drops points again, then it's a crisis for him. Um, yeah. But but he's been able to get his players to give him that response. Something that you don't see with most of the other top teams. They do not have that ability to respond to that. But Pep, like you rightly say, Matthew, is, is, we, we do expect to see a big response from them, both in terms of the style of play and the score. We expect big scores in those games just to respond mm. to uh, what we saw because they want to run away with it. Although I really don't want them to run away with it because that will mean that they have a massive chance of actually lifting the Champions League and I cannot have them ever touch that trophy. Ever. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Maybe your uh, Manchester fans will be touching the trophy while air bedding. It's looking tight for you guys as well. <laughs> yeah, Sly, 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 uh, your thoughts finally on, on Manchester City as you bring the show to a close? I mean, like, I, I kind of spoke a bit more about... I spoke on City when I was discussing the Liverpool game in terms of, like, looking at the top two. Um, right, I don't right. see them going through a... Um, a wobble. You know, like... City is 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 like mercenaries one on one. You know, it's 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 very <laughs> much the players are not trying to pay homage towards anything beyond other than Pep Guardiola and winning a trophy. You know, that's right. why for me, I know that when he leaves, they're gonna have huge problems trying to right. uh, kind of kind of bridge that gap because he's been able to galvanize this kind of godlike complex around him. Um, mm. I don't see it as, as, as anything other than showing players or teams around them and, and around the Premier League that they can be touched, you know, they're, they're not um, untouchable. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the fixtures, yeah, fine. When Norwich comes around, you know, um, when you're looking at Brentford and the likes, like, or even Fulham in the FA Cup, but Brentford are going to go in there with, and they're just going to play. You know what I mean? Right. They might end up getting washed 4-0 or they might actually end up actually potentially getting a result because for them, they just roll the dice, you know? Right. But let's right. be honest, they'll probably get taken <clears throat> to town. Norwich will probably get taken to town. It'll be interesting when you look at now the likes of Everton. Would they have brought in a new manager by the time City come around? You know, and if they have brought in a new manager, what kind of style or approach is he going to take? And then right after the Everton game, you've got the Manchester derby. You know, irrespective of form, when Man United play yeah. Liverpool, Man United play um, City, or Chelsea play Arsenal, Arsenal play Tottenham, you've got some of those derbies where it doesn't matter what the form is. On D right, day, right. is what, what kind of comes to light? You know, you, yeah. I can't, I, I wouldn't be shocked if United came out there and and and, and beat City and nick the result. Now, yeah. Right after that, depending on what you're doing in the Champions League. You know, you're going into April and you've got Liverpool in April. So, like, yeah. there's potentials around. Could be interesting. Yeah. yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Could be interesting. Yeah. It's, 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 it's open. I, don't, I, I wouldn't say yeah. that they are, they are on a, a poor run of form per se because literally, guys, come on, they drew a game against Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. They're not on a poor run of form, but well, I, just think a I suppose. Of Put in place, there's a couple of places where they could, you know, really wobble. Because if they, they go to Liverpool it. and it's like two points, or if they go to Liverpool, sorry, and it's like one point different. Ah, you know, no, that, that's, that's like, it. Okay, whatever. Let's let the front gates <laughs> open. You know what I mean? so, yeah. yeah. It'll be, it'll be yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you awesome. for joining us.
uh, you know, the audience, if you've just tuned in, we had a great session. Feel free to hit the playback. Uh, if you're just joining, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we will be back next week with a transfer special uh, on what should be deadline day. So that should be interesting as well. Uh, check, look out for that. Uh, but do have a great week. Thanks for joining. Chris from Manchester United, Sly from Chelsea. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. Thank you.